Well, I'll be your monkey's uncle. You're watching a comic production. Chapter 2, Section 9, Failover Systems, a McCormick production. Alright, so Failover Systems, um, it's important to note they are synonymous with standby systems. Um, so those words can be used interchangeably, but for this PowerPoint, we're going to be referring to them as failover systems. Um, so overall, they're used to keep a system running when the primary system fails. And by primary system, I mean the means of getting some source, uh, getting to some source, whether that be a power supply or a source of information or content. And they're usually not functional until the primary system fails, which makes them a redundant system. So that basically means as long as everything's working perfectly and everything's fine, this, this system is not going to be seen. It's not going to be used, and it's not going to be acted upon. So this is basically what I was just saying. When the user um, can't get to its primary source, in this case we're talking about the internet in this, um, in this diagram. So when it can't get to its primary server or source of content, and this means it's going to, the technology is going to relay it over to the backup server or backup source, which is our failover system, so that the user can continue to do what they do or get the information that they want. So an example of this is RAID, which stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks. This is a failover system for hard disks specifically. So this means it's going to be or a backup for specifically hardware issues. So when your hardware fails, this is going to be your backup for that. So it creates a fault tolerant system and it's usually made by connecting two or multiple hard disks together in order to create like a system of backups. We're gonna get to that in a minute. Um, REID or uh, mirroring in this instance, that's mirroring is the, the common technique used um, when REID is applied. It's when Hard disks, disks must be connected together, as said before, and each disk contains a copy or backup of the other disk's information. And so basically, when you change or edit anything on one, it's going to be transitioned over to the other, and that creates an instant backup of any changes or modifications or updates that you made on any of your files. Um, but the only issue is that it creates some issues with reliability, which we're going to get to in a minute. Um, it's just a diagram as well of mirroring. So you've got the two hard disks, and when any change happens, it, it's going to follow that line over to the other end. So you've got all these, all these files that are going back and forth, getting uh, transitioned back and forth. So you're always going to have an exact copy of what you had beforehand. So if the hardware fails, you just go over to the other hard disk and you can basically maintain doing your work. And they're always going to have the same amount of data on it because they're literally copying each other back and forth as shown in the diagram. The only problem with this is that corrupt files are transferred. So if a specific file has an issue and becomes corrupt or something along those lines, it will be transferred over. So the only issue with this is it damages both disks. It has a corrupt file in one, it's transferred over, I have a corrupt file in both of them. Um, and there's not really any way to prevent this. So when looking for specific files, this there is a problem with this This means. But in, uh, in order to prevent um, losing data just because of your hardware, hardware shutting down or something like that, this is a legitimate means of uh, backing up your data. Or... Uh, having a failover system. And this damages books and creates problems with reliability. The uninterruptible power supply provides a redundant power source. And so basically, when um, a, a piece of technology is running, it has a constant 
constant source of energy and this provides a backup so if this if this source is interrupted or the connection is lost or something like that it's going to have a backup where it gives the user a short period of time so they can save their data shut down properly things like that so they don't make it worse and it uh, it's usually done by a battery and so this battery has a limited amount of time albeit that um, it's still going to give the user some time that they don't they don't they wouldn't have otherwise and so this creates a transition period where a generator can be fixed or replaced or basically the source of power can be uh, refurbished This is a diagram of what I was talking about earlier. So you have your normal source of AC power that goes from outlet to device. And usually that's just um, going back to forth, back and forth. And um, what happens with this power supply is it's charging off a battery as it's going through. And so if this, if the typical source of power is lost, this battery will then have a uh, will then be the power source until that connection is found again. And so some applications for this with desktops they're relatively small um, and inexpensive and this will usually provide 30 minutes of power and uh, but when applied to large data centers with you know, government databases um, health, Health applications, business, finance, things like that, where you actually you need you need to make sure they're absolutely reliable, and there's a huge amount of data that you have to have. It becomes more expensive and more um, it has more size because you actually have to have more um, more memory available. So this could be rooms of batteries. So citations, these are our pictures we used, and uh, Parker McCormick voice acting for being the voice of McCormick Productions. I'd like to thank you all for coming out this fine evening and watching my beautiful PowerPoint.